Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Melderon, and I've played World of Warcraft for a very, very long time. Even though I started in late vanilla and quit in Legion, I've experienced the vast majority of WoW's evolution. I would like to share my opinions on why you should try Classic WoW when it launches. Yes, I know. By now, I'm willing to bet money you've watched many videos that compare aspects of retail and Classic WoW. These videos explore the core gameplay differences between the two versions of the game by primarily focusing on aspects like class identity and role-playing, the community, the leveling experience, and progression. And I'll be the first to say that these aspects are extremely important comparison points and are alone amazing reasons to try Classic. However, one thing that I think gets overlooked often is the unique storytelling that exists in Vanilla WoW. In my opinion, this is perhaps the most important aspect of what makes Vanilla unique. Primarily because most, if not all, of the aforementioned aspects were also easily apparent if you compare the Burning Crusade, or even Wrath of the Lich King, to the current iteration of the game. In no other expansion did the story get introduced to the player in such a personal and subtle way than in Vanilla WoW. And, before we go further, I want to clarify that when I say story, I'm talking about the lore itself, the antagonists, the goals of your faction, and the lives of each and every NPC. There are three main interconnected ways Vanilla does this. The first is by not making you, the player, the center of attention. The second is by providing the lore within the quest text and not in cutscenes and cinematics. And finally, by subtly and slowly exposing the player to the game's antagonists through the diverse questing and dungeoning systems. Using these three mechanisms, the game developers were able to build the narrative without just pushing it in your face immediately. This, to me, is good game design, and ultimately, great storytelling. Let's now explore the first point. You are but a cog in a great machine. I know, to many of you this may seem like a letdown, but in my and many others' opinions, everyone having weapons of legendary power and artifacts of forbidden knowledge is extremely immersion-breaking. In Vanilla WoW, when you saw someone have a rare mount or a legendary item, you'd mark that day in your calendar, take a screenshot, and tell your friends you were in the presence of a heroic player. It was amazing to not only see, but it also gave you something to aspire to, while also making the world more unknown, more vast. Vanilla makes it unapologetically and abundantly clear that you are insignificant when you log into the game for the first time. Your gear is shabby, your blades are dull, and your abilities are average at best. This is not in place to demean you as a player, no. It is in place for a very important reason. It relays to you that there is so much more out there, so much more to explore, so much to learn. In my opinion, it gives you something to look forward to, but most importantly, you not being the center of attention makes it apparent that the world moves on without you. If you will not take up your sword and begin your adventure, guess what? Someone else will. The story, therefore, is not dependent on your actions. You are not a horde warlord, nor are you a Grand Marshal in the Alliance forces. You are, at best, just a volunteer joining the local militia to assist your faction and aspire to be something greater. But, make no mistake, you can become something much greater. Just not the main protagonist. You can instead become a somewhat integral piece of a much larger puzzle, and ultimately, take on the forces of evil that plague your world. But, and this is a big but, you cannot do it alone. You see, in Vanilla, in order to achieve greatness, you need to work well with the team. Whether that be 4, 9, 14, 19, or 39 other players. In this way, the richness of the world slowly unfolds around you and builds the MMORPG experience. And that community aspect so many of us are looking forward to experience once again. You start your adventure in Azeroth by completing lowly missions delivering a letter to your class trainer, clearing out some vermin from a mine, and slaughtering a few pesky boars that are eating up crops in a local farm. Slowly as you prove your worth, you are awarded gear and are tasked with fighting more dangerous foes like the Defias Brotherhood and the brutal Quillbore. It is then you first realize that there are other forces at work in Azeroth that exist on a continuum between good and evil. There is a lot of gray area in Vanilla Well, the Defias have some noble qualities and warranted reasons for their actions. 
The Quilbor want to protect their culture and their lands, even though there is some greater corruption that exists, unbeknownst to them. This holds true for many of the forces you will interact with, like the Centaur and the Frillbogs. And with each new zone and each enemy you meet, you become entrenched in the living lore of the game. But it's up to you to read the quest text. It's up to you to make the lore real. Cadgar isn't telling you why what you're doing is important or whether it's noble or not. That decision is entirely up to you. It isn't until later in the leveling process that you are fighting proponents of true evil, like agents of the Burning Legion or servants of the Old Gods. In this way, Vanilla extends the world and creates a diverse storyline. Think of Vanilla as a good dungeon master. If you have never played a tabletop game, then you may not get this comparison. But when playing Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder, the dungeon master's job, if he or she is doing it properly, is to let the story unfold slowly, to not overtly explain how each puzzle is completed, and to put you and your party in situations that require you to work together and think. To me, Vanilla is an excellent dungeon master that never shows his or her full hand. Unfortunately, this dungeon master analogy has become less applicable as well as evolved. The game, in my opinion, now tells you everything you need to know before even providing an adventure to embark on. Let's cover point number two. The lore is in the text. If you've ever played the Burning Crusade, then you remember the moment you entered the Dark Portal. Honestly, it is a moment that I will never forget. But what is the first thing you see when traveling through space and time and setting foot on another world? Think back. Yes, scores and scores of demons attacking the Dark Portal. Am I saying that this experience wasn't amazing and heart-stopping? No, not at all. I'm simply trying to point out the core differences between the storytelling styles. You may also remember the epic cinematic that reintroduced us to a fan favorite, Ilden Stormrage. Now, if we compare both the cinematics for Vanilla and TBC, what do you notice right away aside from the cleaner and better graphics? Yep, you guessed it. There is an antagonist in one, and not in the other. You, as the player, know before you even buy the game who you will be fighting. In all fairness, this is what Mr. Pandaria and Battle for Azeroth did partially right. You don't know who the big bad is in either of those expansions from their cinematics. But Vanilla takes this a step further by also not revealing anything during most of the leveling process either. It's not until much later that the player is introduced to the forces of Blackrock Mountain and Anixia. Moreover, Anixia herself attempts to bring down the city of Stormwind from within. And, you may be thinking, well, Maldoran, these differences are just a product of expanding the game. Each expansion has to have a theme or reason behind it, right? Yeah, I totally agree with you there. Expansions only cover small level ranges and are geographically inferior to the base game. But, in my opinion, storytelling can be done with a bit more grace and subtlety in these expansions. TBC and Wrath focused on raid encounters to drive the lore. While in Vanilla, the lore was spread evenly throughout the experience from multiple sources. In Vanilla, if you want to know why the Scarlet Crusade is so extreme, or why Tyrion Forging is standing in the middle of nowhere on the western shore of the Eastern Playlands, you have to read the quest text to find out. If you ever want to know why you're going to Blackrock Mountain in the first place, you have to pay attention to attunement quests. There are many, many layers to the greater story of Classic WoW. Each NPC, dungeon, and raid have their own, and it's up to you to explore each of them. Also, repeatable quests were not available in Vanilla, so when you completed quests, let's say the first time you completed all of the Jintha lore quests in the Hinterlands, you actually feel like you made a difference in the world and stopped a real threat to your faction. Nowadays with dailies and world quests, the impact of completing the quest is completely lost, as you fight the same NPC day in and day out sometimes. In Vanilla, when you completed the quest, that page of the book was turned. This established a sense of permanence and completion into the gameplay that is akin to finishing a chapter of a good book. The first two points I've given you can be summated graphically. If you are like me, you like plots. So let's imagine a two-dimensional plane with two axes. On the bottom, or x-axis, we have time. And on the y, or left axis, the vertical one, we have storytelling mode. On the bottom of the y-axis, we have completely player and world-associated storytelling. And on the top of this axis, we have completely established lore-associated storytelling. 
an established lore example would be something like Illidan Stormrage or Arthas Menethil. Above the plot itself are each expansion, going from left to right through time. In Vanilla Well, the story was much more player and world focused, but still had some established lore elements. In the very next expansion, The Burning Crusade, the narrative became much more established lore oriented, with its inclusion of the Burning Legion and Illidan Stormrage. In Wrath of the Lich King, the Scourge and Arthas stole the show, moving us even more into the established lore. In Cataclysm, the world changed significantly, but was still grounded in established lore. Here we see a slight shift in storytelling. In Miss of Pandaria, the same trend continues as Pandaria was actually established lore, and we have all the old guys stuff as well. Okay, Warlords of Draenor is where things really turn around. We drop way down into the player and world associated storytelling, into, my opinion, the realm of unbelievability. This occurs for two interconnected reasons. The first is that the lore went into a totally new direction, as, yep, you guessed it, a totally new timeline was introduced that had absolutely no established lore behind it. The second reason is, since we don't have any established lore, someone had to become the center of attention. And that person is you. This is why you are now referred to as the hero in the narrative. The story has no legs to stand on. And in Legion, this got even worse, as everyone and their mother had the damned Ashbringer. This is completely lazy storytelling in my opinion, and makes the story so unbelievable. And now, with BFA, I honestly have no idea what they are going for here. Is the narrative player, world, lore, or is it faction based? Honestly, I have no clue. But I'll be honest, I'm genuinely interested in where they go with the narrative in the future. If you're like me, I'm sure you've noticed that this trend line eerily simulates the one buzzing around the internet depicting the popularity of WoW as a function of subscriber number. And I agree, <laughs> it is an interesting association to make, but just remember guys, correlation does not necessarily equal causation. If they are linked, it would mean that people enjoy good lore driven narratives. However, these are hard to keep going in the long run. In actuality, the sole reason I made this was to only point out that Vanilla exists in a very unique place on this timeline, with a more player and world related story but still having aspects of established lore peppered in. It's extremely balanced, and to me this is what makes Vanilla unique. Finally, let's discuss the third point, the subtle unfolding of the lore. I'd like to tackle this point utilizing examples from the questing system. And I'd like to personally thank a friend of the channel, Taladril, for pointing this one out. If you ever had the pleasure of leveling in the Barrens, then you may remember digging up some insect eggs south of Camp Tarajo. Silithid eggs, to be exact, utilizing a special quest item. The quest giver, Corin, a troll in the crossroads, says to you, Eh, hey, Meldron, I've been sent to the crossroads to watch over the land and take note of its happenings for me masters in Orgrimmar. One object of my studies are the insect-like creatures found in the south of the Field of Giants. We know little of these creatures, so I'd be making it a point to discover more. They seem to have uh, intelligence to them, more so than any normal animal. Take this digging claw, man, and collect some of the creatures' eggs from their mounds. But be careful. If alerted, they will attack you. I'm really sorry you guys had to suffer through that. Anyway, when you turn the quest in, he says, you please me, Melderon. The eggs and the tool. Well done. And for your reward. Uh, and that's it. There really isn't any logical follow up to this quest. However, there are similar quests in Feralis, Tenaris, and Onguro that task you with finding out more about these strange insects. But all of them are exploratory in nature, as the Horde, the Alliance, and even the Goblins are trying to find out what makes the Silithid tick. And if you did these quests before 1.9, no one really knew what the insectoids were up to. I mentioned this Silithid example for one simple reason. The developers were extremely subtle building the Encourage content up over a year before its release as a raid tier utilizing minimal open-ended quests. As the game progressed, these misunderstood curiosities grew into something literally world-changing, as the story ultimately led to the Gates of Encourage opening event and our first brush as a player base to one of the old gods, Cthun. This is an excellent example of good storytelling and foreshadowing, as the Silithid story arc provides an example of how invested the developers were to the story. Not only that, but the quests which seemed unconnected at first, span several zones and tens of levels. 
that's dedication in design. And this is only one example of great quest engineering. We can say the same for the Morladeen quest in Duskwood, the missing diplomat quest line which spans five zones, the stones that bind us in the Swamp of Sorrows and the Blasted Lands, Tyrian forgings in Dreams quest line, and countless others. These quests not only build a living, breathing world, but they provide such variety in enemies. In TBC we fight the Burning Legion, in Wrath it's the Scourge, in Kata it's the Old Gods, in Pandaria it's the Old Gods again, and we go on and on. But in Vanilla, we are put into a series of complex struggles that contain even more complex stories within them. This complexity provides so much variety and so much lore for the player to experience. For me, these three reasons that I highlighted are why I'm going back to Classic WoW. Because it's where I can truly immerse myself into the Warcraft universe yet again. For me, it's where I can forge lasting friendships while embarking on unique adventures. For me, it's where I can experience the love and commitment of the Classic WoW development team through the eyes of my character. I truly hope you'll join me and embark on your own adventures and have your own unique experiences in the greatest gaming environment ever created. I hope to see you in Azeroth, friends. Hey ladies and gents, I had a lot of fun making this video. It took me a long time to make, and it really took me some time to really think about how I wanted to portray the feelings I had about the Vanilla WoW storytelling, and how it's truly unique in the evolution of World of Warcraft in general. And I'd like to know what you think. I want to know why Classic WoW was unique to you. So if you have a moment, think about something that really made you Vanilla unique to you and why you're really eager to go back. Write a comment, and I'd like to see your your point of views as well. And if you're a retail player that's never experienced Classic WoW before but just are really eager to give it a shot, take this time to really think about what do you want in the game. Is it just getting the max level and burning through content or is it to really escape and go into a, a fantasy world, live out vicariously through your avatar? But anyway guys, if you like this video, please leave a like below. And if you enjoy this type of content or are interested in other types of videos we make here at Def Camp Melder on TV, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more guides. Def Talk interviews with WoW content creators and enthusiasts, Melderon's classic WoW vlogs, and those Dungeon Diver Let's Plays, which will be coming up soon. Also, join us on Discord to be part of the Def Camp Melderon TV community, and follow us on Twitter for video updates and more. Links will be in the description. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our wonderful patrons who make videos like this possible. If you want to help us make better content by supporting us directly, consider becoming a patron. There are a number of rewards that you may be interested in. A link to the Patreon page is available down in the description, and will also be available at the end of the video. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, this is Melderon signing off. Keep on keep binding and grinding, baby, and make your own story in Azeroth. Oh yeah!